Everyone, Father Jared coming to you on this Wednesday afternoon. Hope each and every one of you are having a good day. Know thyself. It's a central axiomatic idea of the Western world. It runs through the philosophical tradition. It runs through the spiritual tradition. It runs just through our entire culture. It's so foundationally, so fundamentally important to understanding how the individual fits into society as a whole, into the economy of salvation where we level it up to the uh, level of faith, that it's something that I think is highlighted so well in a story that, and the reason why I bring this up is because of a story I was thinking about that the abbot of the Grand Chartreuse and Order of Cartusians, which is a very strict observance of the Benedictine order, live a very prayerful uh, life of solitude and a lot of silence. He talks about whenever people come to their monastery thinking this will be great, finally get away, unplug, that they always inevitably end up running into somebody they did not expect themselves. And why that is and why he says, says that is because it is scary to run into ourselves. It's a terrifying thing to come face to face with who we truly are, to not simply mark ourselves up according to I'm a Bengals fan, I'm a Browns fan, Buckeyes fan, Michigan fan. You know, like all these trivial things we usually use to define ourselves, which to be honest are usually quite silly ways of defining who we are as human persons. They're not what really make us unique. They're not really what make us unrepeatable children of God. It makes us individually as an un unrepeatable child of God. So instead, what we should do is we should actually turn and face who we are with the Lord's help, obviously. Like we can't look into and we can't even analyze ourselves, I think, without the Lord's help. It's important for us to stand there with him and his blessed mother, as I think I so often have to do whenever I recognize something to myself that's particularly not good. Like it's good for me to look at that part of myself with the help of our Lord, with the help of Mary. And so that's why it's scary, because a lot of times when we turn and face ourselves, we encounter part of parts of ourself that aren't all that great, that aren't good. In fact, can be quite sinister and bad. Sinful parts of ourself, selfish, jealousy, resentments. And we look at all those things and we realize a lot of resentments or jealousies aren't really all that justified. We have in our mind like, well, I know it's not a good thing, but I'm, I, we can rationalize why we think ours are justified. When we face ourselves, we realize they're not our justification isn't really there. And that's terrifying. But at the same time, if you don't turn and face yourself and you don't you know, face those worst parts of yourself, in many ways, coming to know yourself in that journey of, you know, don't generally like the term self-discovery, but the journey of coming to know yourself more fully as the Lord sees you, what you also find is, and what I've found is not just a heap of sins, even though it is much like mining or like digging for gold, that you have to dig through a lot of dirt, a lot of rocks, a lot of hard stuff in order to find what's really good in yourself, what really makes you unique, and what gifts and talents the Lord has actually given you to be put to use for His purposes. And so I think whenever we begin to face ourselves, the terrifying part is coming to face those parts of ourselves which aren't all that great, aren't all that good. But the fun part is then encountering those parts of ourselves that, huh, I never knew that in many ways I had something that was so good within myself. A gift, a talent, something I didn't even realize was there. And even in sometimes we can find that something within ourselves which isn't maybe all that great at this time because we've been putting the gift to the completely the wrong use, in fact, in complete disservice to God, non-servium, not serving him, instead ourselves or lower desires. For example, some of you may have uh, children like this, but children, you know, like someone and, you know, I had a little bit of this within myself growing up, but the gift to be able to push someone's buttons, like knowing what's going to set someone off, knowing their insecurities, and then be able to poke at that in order to get a reaction out of them. Not a good thing, not at all. But imagine if someone, you know, a child that has that. So instead of encouraged to, instead of using that gift of being perceptive, the gift of being empathetic, to use to like get, take, bring the worst out in people, 
that gift, that talent, that innate ability was put to use to be able to tell whenever somebody's having a difficult time and then be able to speak some sort of words of kindness, of encouragement to that situation, to maybe be able to better understand, like to empathize with somebody who's going through a difficult time, whenever they are going through a difficult time, and no one else can really see it. And so you see that journey of self-discovery can bring out so many elements of ourselves and can help us again with the Lord's help. Like I can't emphasize enough, you can only do this with the Lord's help because facing ourselves is a terrifying, terrifying thing. It's a hard thing to do, but with his help, we can face it. And it can be such a powerful thing because then we can learn how who we are is meant to fit into his plan for our lives, but also in his plan for salvation. So I would encourage you to begin doing that journey of coming to know yourself, of coming to know who you are in God's eyes, coming to understand who you truly are, so that way you can begin to put to use the gifts and talents the Lord has given you, put away those parts of yourself, put to death those parts of yourself which are not worthy of Him, not worthy of your call as a child of God, and then begin to live a life of virtue, a life of holiness, and ultimately a life that is meant, that is made in the image and likeness of God, that is made for more, made for greatness to put all of those things to his use so that ultimately you can participate in salvation and become the saint that the Lord is calling you to be.